this. This is incredible. This is the reason why I get up in the morning. There is nothing else like this. This is beautiful. A true work of art. This is what it means to be gaming. This is everything. I love this. It is perfection. Project Nobody May Cry. Good Lord Almighty, this is the mod. It's that mod. I've experienced a ton, a countless amount of Kingdom Hearts mods over the years, uh, whether it be for KH1, 2, or 3. And I'm telling you right now, this is it. This is perfection. This is hands down the best video game mod I think I've ever played. Now, of course, I'm a little bit biased because Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of my all-time favorite games, but uh, as an overhaul to give you a completely new experience for a game that you already love, this is just insane. Remembering that I did cover the uh, the Nidus overhaul mod a few years ago, this is kind of coming from like the same team. Um, I've yet to experience the Aqua Overhaul mod, hopefully we'll do that sometime soon. But in amongst all of the different playable character mods for KH3, overhauls for KH3, different overhauls for Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, and even just Kingdom Hearts 2 mods, like, this is insane. Like, it's insane. I have no idea how to start this video, uh, other than just ramble about how good this is. Like, seriously, if you do not have Kingdom Hearts uh, on PC, and keeping in mind this isn't actually a PC version mod, this is more so a PCSX2 uh, emulator mod, so basically you just need an ISO of the game, not going to tell you where you get that, have PCSX2 and you can get this, you can, you can fully experience it as of right now. And please do yourself a favor and do that, because it is insane, I cannot stress this enough, this, this mod is so good! 
destroy! It took a whole entire team of modders to put this together, and going through the actual overhaul, you can tell so much thought, time, and effort has gone into this. I did cover the mod uh, before the recent alpha release uh, earlier this year, but now that the alpha release is out, that means it's available to the public. I've gone through the entire game, uh, and I have to say, wow! Um, have I said that already? I don't think I have. So the overhaul is currently in an alpha state, even though it is currently public to play. Uh, but don't get the wrong impression towards that. The game is fully playable from start to finish, and it basically already is a complete package. At this point, from what I understand, there's still a lot of different features and bugs that need ironing out uh, for it to become a full-blown release. But at this stage, even though it is alpha, the whole experience is here, and it's something to just gawk over. Now on the surface, this overhaul mod basically looks like a Roxas overhaul. It's kind of that, but also the entire mod has been inspired through the different mechanics of the Devil May Cry, of course, hence the mod name, uh, Project Nobody May Cry. So what this means is, a lot of the different mechanics that we do see in Devil May Cry have been infused into the combat system here for the mod, and it works insanely well. No surprises there though, because of course, if we look at something like Devil May Cry, it is one of the best uh, action games, real-time action games, and the same can also be said for Kingdom Hearts. And when you fuse both flavors from those two games together, you get a perfect, succulent, ripe, crisp, juicy apple of goodness known as Project Nobody May Cry. So first up, Roxas has a brand new moveset, something that is a little bit more quicker and certainly more powerful. Gone is Roxas' slow swing of the Keyblade. The mod introduces a brand new set of abilities, mainly when looking towards the uh, action abilities. In regards to support-based abilities, there's a few new ones, we'll go over those. I should mention that the gameplay combat pacing of this mod has been toned up. Cage 2 is fast, and that's why I think a lot of people uh, really enjoyed it compared to Cage 1. Square Enix really toned things up a few notches, this mod increases that absolute ridiculousness of the combat speed, like by times two, which is not a bad thing, it's enjoyable. In the beginning, you'll start off with a pretty basic moveset, though one that is very fast, and by the end of the game, you'll end up with an absolutely insane slate of attacks to pull off all of which definitely represent Roxas's character, using a lot of the different animations and effects that we see from the Roxas data fight and already pre-existing animations within Cage 2. Uh, you feel almost like you're in a dry form just with Roxas's base combos in this game. It's a lot of fun. At the beginning of the game, you'll automatically start off with a few different abilities, similar in that to critical mode, but also you'll start off with Finishing Plus as well as Combo Master. Uh, finishing Plus obviously allowing you to pull off an extra additional combo finisher, and Combo Master allowing you to string together a combo without actually needing to attack an enemy. This is fantastic because of course when we look at DMC, you don't actually need an enemy in front of you in order to pull off a combo. Now there are three new support abilities, Taunt, Luminous Drive, and Enemy Step. Let's talk about Luminous Drive because this is a brand new core mechanic to the mod itself. Now as we know in Devil May Cry, there is a style system. The better that you perform whilst you're in combat, pulling off unique attacks and moves without getting hit, that style meter will increase, with the highest rank being SSS. That whole mechanic has been put into this mod, because of course you can't have a DMC inspired mod without the style rank meter. As you're pulling off attacks and doing really cool stuff and avoiding damage in Kingdom Hearts here, uh, you'll notice that the attack prompt on the command menu sort of changes. We've got Crazy, Blast, Alright, Sweet, SS Showtime, and SSS Stylish being the highest. Now Luminos Drive is attached to the style system, and as you build your way up through the style ranks, Roxas will begin to glow. You'll receive passive buffs for actually having Luminos Drive activated, meaning that the game actually encourages you to pull off and string together unique combos 
and build that style meter, as a reward, you become stronger. There's a numerous amount of ways to build the style meter. You do, of course, have just stringing together combos, going to drive, uh, using magic attacks, but then there is also perfect dodge, perfect guard, as well as taunting. The reward for guarding here is a lot better than in base Kingdom Hearts. So a glow will appear when you've pulled off perfect guard. You'll be able to also counter attack the enemy. It will help build your style meter, but on top of that too, it actually rewards you with filling a decent portion of your drive gauge. Perfect dodging is sort of the same thing. So reversal is now an activatable ability whenever you want on the fly. It's no longer a reaction command specifically for only Dusk Nobodies. It's now a magic, so you can shortcut it in the shortcut menu and pull it off whenever you want to. Incredibly handy for being able to get out of harm's way and get behind an enemy, but if you perfectly time this, this will also help build that style meter as well as give you a portion of your drive back. So this mod does such a great job of rewarding the player for actually using these defensive mechanics. And also, reversal will keep your combo chain going for your style rank, so it's important to use reversal sort of where you can. I used it for at least most of my playthrough, uh, but ended up switching it out for eventually reflect because I'm a classic Kingdom Hearts noob. Now Taunt's pretty self-explanatory if you do play the DMC games. If you press select whilst during combat, basically your character will taunt the enemy. Uh, pretty much just talk some sh**. The result of this in DMC is that it does also build your stylish rank. And yes, it's the exact same here, finally in a Kingdom Hearts game, mid fight we can talk some smack absolutely fantastic and it will help you build your style meter. I should also mention too that depending on what drive form you're in, uh, you'll have a different taunt. Roxas will say something different, a very nice minor touch. Get real, look which one of us is winning. Look sharp. Why did the Keyblade choose me? I have to know. Shut up. Why don't you quit? How many times do I have to beat you? And lastly, there is enemy step, allowing you to jump on top of enemies, just like we see in DMC. Works a little bit differently here in Kingdom Hearts. Essentially, if you sort of jump on an enemy or just over an enemy, it will reset your jump and dash. Basically in concept, allowing you to infinitely keep jumping so long as you're jumping over an enemy. Looking at the growth abilities, there are only four this time around. We have the classic high jump, we've got aerial dodge, classic glide, but a brand new dodge, which is known as Dash. This is definitely more in line with exactly how Roxas canonically dodges with that little sort of light dash forward. You obtain at least most of these quite early on in the game. Some of them can also then be upgraded via leveling up your drive forms. Oh yeah, and by the way, a dash allows you to not only just dash on the ground, but you can also dash in mid-air. This is fantastic. Something that Kingdom Hearts 2 really should have had from the get-go. Now looking at the magic system, this is like the bread and butter of the mod. You're going to be using magic 18 times more than you ever did in base Kingdom Hearts 2. So the magics we have for this mod are Fire, Blizzard, Thunder, Limit Break, Reversal, and Reflect. The first thing you should know is you can now use magic whilst moving, just as you can in Wisdom form, and just like we can in, let's say, Kingdom Hearts 3. Thank God, no more idle magic use. Roxas will use these magics completely differently to Sora. For fire, Roxas will dash forward. This is great for covering some distance between you and an enemy, or just dashing through a group of enemies with, of course, the 360 uh, fire-based attack. This is more kind of in line with the way that Wisdom Form uses fire. But the finisher for fire, after using it a consecutive amount of times, Roxas will dash towards the enemy and slice them up into the air with an uppercut attack, then allowing you to string into an aerial combo. Blizzard will shoot an ice projectile forward, like it usually does, but on top of that, Roxas will also strike rain, locking and stunning an enemy into position for a small amount of time. It's great for crowd control and to also keep an enemy in lock so that you can close in for a combo. The finisher for Blizzard is sort of the same thing, but just covers more area. Personally, out of all the magics, uh, Blizzard was probably my favorite. For Thunder, Roxas will perform upper slash to knock the enemy into the air, and about a second later, the Thunderbolt will come down. 
This Thunderbolt though will be cancelled if you quickly follow up with any other attack. So there's a little bit of a technique here to using Thunder. The finisher for it is basically Sparkstorm from Recoded, where Roxas will go into a buzzsaw sort of pinwheel uh, attack with thunder. It's really cool. This is also another magic that I used a lot in the beginning of the game. Reflect is basically the exact same as it is in Kingdom Hearts 2, except the actual reflect shell is now sort of a dark purple. Very cool to fit the theme. We've already talked about reversal, but uh, yeah, it's here. It's a magic. Uh, it doesn't actually use any MP, but you do need at least one MP in order to use it. So if you're on MP cooldown, you won't be able to pull it off. And lastly, for the cure spell, we have Limit Break. Incredibly appropriate for Roxas, considering this was a mechanic in days. It's here and it replaces cure. It will heal you, but on top of that, it will also uh, perform a very strong attack, uh, like incredibly strong attack. I, I believe this is actually one of the attacks from uh, the Riku limit. So cool to see that here. It will obviously expend all of your MP. Of course, all of these magics can be used in mid air. Really the only one that changes like quite a bit is Thunder and the move that Roxas pulls off whilst using Thunder in mid air is fantastic. It is a dash down towards the ground, which is great for like if you are performing like an aerial combo and you want to get back down to the ground to then follow up with a ground combo, absolutely use thunder. Now, there are also three special unique attacks that you can pull off by pressing down R2 and square at the same time, uh, depending on if you're at the beginning of a combo, toward the end of a combo, or you're pulling off an aerial combo. The first one here is Meteor Strike. This one is fantastic. You can pull it off uh, basically whenever, so long as you're not towards the end of a ground combo, otherwise you'll activate a different one. It does a big area of effect radius attack, and it's fantastic fantastic for if you are surrounded by a group of enemies. The next one is Whirlwind Slash. You can perform this anytime you're in the air. Roxas will basically just sort of dash forward. Uh, you can use these sort of special abilities when mainly looking at Meteor Strike and Whirlwind Slash to almost reset your combo from the beginning of an aerial or ground combo. And the final one is Void Blast performed right at the end of a combo. Roxas will slash three pillars of light outwards. So you can tell just by all of these new additions when I'm mainly looking at the uh, new action abilities as well as the R2 square abilities and then mixing and melding in the new magic attacks and how they work. The fact that they're not just magic but they also infuse physical based attacks into them as well, you have so much depth when it just comes to basic normal comboing to a point where it does definitely now mirror something like DMC's depth. I'm not saying that Kingdom Hearts doesn't have depth when it comes to its combat system, but everything this mod adds to the already existing combat system of Kingdom Hearts 2 adds just an additional layer onto the depth of the system itself. Now let's talk about drive forms, because yes they're here and they are all different and they are super cool. Uh, we've got three drive forms that essentially replace wisdom form, limit form, and final form. Now, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to assume that both Valor form, a variant of it, and Anti form will eventually be added into the full version when that releases. These forms, all three of them, are so strong though that like we d we don't need any more drive forms. But for the share, like I guess novelty factor. It would be cool to see more and to see what the team end up doing with a Valor and Anti-Form variant. So the first form we have here is Bladeless. Uh, this is the Wisdom Form variant. Roxas pretty much pulls up his hood on his organization coat, ditches the Keyblade, and goes full Magic Force. It's the very first form you get just after the Mysterious Tower, and it's incredibly powerful. The main stick here with this form is in similar fashion to Wisdom Form, you can move around using ranged based attacks. You can also use all of your magics whilst in this form. The form does have melee capabilities though. Uh, as for its aerial combo, it is all pretty much melee focused. So it's great. It's sort of got the best of both worlds. Magic does work a little bit different 
differently here. So when using fire, you'll send out a bunch of light pillars around Roxas. When using blizzard, a bigger purple piece of ice will shoot out while Roxas also throws an invisible keyblade forward in a strike grade fashion. Both reflect and thunder will send out two sets of waves of light pillars. And for the two forms that can use magic, uh, Limit Break will do something unique. So for Bladeless here, it will summon this sort of uh, pyramid, little triangle uh, prison of death that does an insane amount of damage. Next we have Light and Darkness form, unlocked after the Midway Twilight Town visit. Roxas still has his hood up, but this time he is equipped with two keyblades, of course, it's gotta be the Oblivion and Oathkeeper. It's essentially dual wield Roxas. This is replacing Limit form though, so we have a bunch of Roxas themed limits to pull off while in this form, and they are crazy. I personally have to say that out of the bunch of forms here, uh, this one is my personal favorite, just due to these limits. First up we have Final Arcana, allowing Roxas to quickly zip around and move between enemies throwing both of his keyblades forward. The final finisher for this limit is a sort of magnet effect, dragging all of the enemies around him to finish off with a big explosion. Next we have The End, which is my personal favorite, and this thing is so cool to use. Roxas basically zips forward and does like, I don't know, like a Virgil type attack from DMC. So again, very appropriate. He'll basically just freeze time and perform 1 million samurai slashes. It does very high damage. You can also follow up with the reaction command Shatter to do another cut through. Um, this thing is insane. I, I love using this. Next is Dual Shot. This is this form's version of Sonic Blade. Basically works the exact same way, but the final finisher, if you follow it up, uh, will send out a magic projectile explosion that does massive area damage. And finally, we have Magic Hour. This is that really kind of scary attack that I guess uh, Roxas pulls off midway through his actual boss fight where he floats up into the air, all of those magical pillars surround him, and he sends out a bunch of light-based projectiles. It's the same thing here. There's also a follow-up finisher that you can do to further extend this attack. And the final form here is, well, it, it's final form, um, but known as Awakened Form. And again, this is just another variant of Jewel Wield Roxas. For this form, Roxas wears his hood down and his keyblades have an intense glow effect with like a lot of sparkles. I don't know, Pretty Boy or something like that? This ground combo is quite similar to that of Light and Darkness form. Uh, a lot of dash forwards though, as well as that the aerial combo is Pretty similar to that of just base dual Roxas from that first Twilight Town kind of Axel fight. Uh, it does some insane damage though, and the movement of this form is ridiculous. Uh, Roxas, even on the ground, is just constantly gliding, and he's super quick. Uh, so you've got some insane mobility when using this form. What you really want to be focusing on while using this form though is the magic. So because final form can use magic, this form can too. So when we look at fire, it's pretty much just standard fire, although slightly enhanced. But for the finisher of this, Roxas will do a massive AoE uh, sort of buzzsaw slash. Again, that very first attack that he uses in his data fight. Reflect is normal for the most part, except its finisher will send out a bunch of projectiles and raining down keyblades. Pretty insane. Blizzard will also do the same thing. We've also got that same familiar purple looking type Blizzard um, ice from Bladeless form. Uh, but again, it will send out a whole wave of Blizzard projectiles. This one is very strong. You ever wanted to like thunder nuke someone? Uh, well, yeah, now you can because Awakened Forms Thunder uh, for its finisher sends out a bio obliteration of thunder strikes. Very cool. But perhaps the absolute coolest if you use Limit Break while in this form you can now use six Keyblades, and here we were thinking that Final Form was badass, but before, uh, what about six? Yeah, Roxas has six. This essentially just enhances 
all of your attacks whilst in this form because of course you know there's like six keyblades smacking that one oversized ant that that poor poor ant so the main story is basically the same here but there are some brand new events and extra additions that have been chucked in a few things have been sort of replaced and swapped around so i'll give you a few examples of this so the chain of memories organization members when looking at zexian malusha lexius vexen Laxine are now bosses a part of the main story and have been replaced with a few of the second visit Disney World bosses. We've got Zexion in the Land of Dragons, we've got Marluxia in Port Royal replacing the Grim Reaper boss. I, I like that, I see what you did there. Luxine is now the Halloween Town boss. Vexen can be found at the front of the mansion when going into Twilight Town towards the end of the game. This is great, once again, makes sense from the chain of memory situation. And Lexius can be found in Agrabah during the second visit rather than fighting Genie Jafar, and thank God for that. But what's really cool about this when looking at specifically uh, the Agrabah area is that for the area that you would usually be riding carpet, you no longer ride carpet. You actually get to explore this area fully on foot. And yes, there have been Heartless Swans that have been added into this area as well as an additional scenario. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. That is in fact a Heat Saber from Kingdom Hearts Days imported into Kingdom Hearts 2 with all of its animations, all of its attacks, all of its effects. Uh, the Chill Saber is also here and you fight both of these guys uh, quite a few times throughout the story where they've been replaced. So another time you'll come across them is during that halfway Twilight Town visit uh, just after you've defeated the waves of nobodies and gone against the berserkers for the first time, you'll have this scenario where, randomly, Riku will appear, disappear, and a chill and heat saber uh, will fight you. So this is cool, that's also yet again, like in the Sandlot, another throwback there to Daze. Just saying, if you are a Daze fan, this is just 100% the uh, mod for you. It almost kind of gives you that feeling of a Daze remake. You might also be wondering about the Pride Lands. Yes, you are on foot in the Pride Lands. You are not some lion version of Roxas. Uh, of course, like the organization don't really abide by the world rules of having to blend in. So here you actually get to explore all of the Pride Lands on foot. And because of Roxas's dash and how quick it is, uh, it's not annoying to actually navigate this world being in a non-lion form. So very cool, a bit of a difference. You might be a little bit curious as to how the Ground Shaker uh, boss fight works in the Pride Lands, considering that you sort of need to be Lion Form in order to pull off the reaction command to get onto its back. Uh, yeah, in this mod, he's got like a bad conjunctivitis infection, and so one smack to the eye and he's, he's dead. I'm assuming for the final version, this boss will likely be replaced with something else. At the beginning of the game, when you're going through the Seven Wonders, when looking at the Waterfall Shadow Roxas segment, there is now two Shadow Roxases, and when looking at the Mysterious Wall, instead of having to dodge all of these random balls coming out of the wall, you simply just have to survive against Cypher, Setzer, and VV for a certain amount of time. Also, big rip to dog bag minigame. Yeah, no more dog bag minigame. The, the dog's out of the bag. Uh, this time around, in this alternate universe, we just simply fight nobodies on the hill. Uh, F in chat for dog bag or bag dog, whatever it is in your language. The 1000 Heartless fight has been replaced with a Riku fight. Your Majesty? D d it, what are you doing? I don't want to- No, please! I don't want to know the wrath of the mouse! Also, this is just f***ing hilarious. Like, the information up the top says, Defeat the mysterious man. That's a mouse! And he's so small that he's not even in the intro sequence. I'm dying. A lot of those really annoying moments throughout Kingdom Hearts 2, namely some of the weird mini games, like having to press triangle to move the wardrobe out of the way of the door to get into the Dungeon of Beasts castle, uh, all of those kinds of things have been skipped. Another kind of example of this is like in Pride Lands when you have to take care of the three hyenas in the second visit. Uh, of course, you're not in a lion form, so to make this a little bit easier, they essentially just have one HP. You hit them once, 
their debt. There's a lot of these sort of quality of life improvements throughout the entire mod. Uh, on top of that too, like cutscenes are all automatically skipped for you aside from the beginning cutscenes to do with Roxas. So you won't see any cutscenes, you don't have to worry about them. Anyone that's playing this mod has seen the KH2 cutscenes a million times. They are all automatically skipped. The dice model for if you get turned into a dice by either Luxord or one of the gambler nobodies has been changed to better suit that of Roxas. The dice is now black with an illustrated artwork of Roxas's head on it. Gummy ship missions are not a thing here, though if you want to, you can do them. All of the worlds are automatically unlocked. That is super cool, saves a lot of time. And talking about the gummy ship, uh, the actual gummy ship model on the world map is now like a little nobody ship that you see uh, in one of the gummy ship missions as the enemies. A very nice touch. During the Heartless Invasion of Disney Castle, uh, the throne room's color palette is all like dark and, and gloomy and it looks really cool. Probably the biggest new additions here though is looking at the world that never was and Traverse Town. Yes, I said that right. Atlantica has been completely removed and has rather been replaced with Traverse Town, we have a completely custom world in Kingdom Hearts 2, Traverse Town from Kingdom Hearts 1 imported into KH2, and it actually works like a proper world, as if it's like some kind of DLC. You've got basically every single area of Traverse Town here. First district, second district, third district, uh, the alleyway. You've got Merlin's house. Uh, what's funny about this is there's obviously no swimming animations or any kind of swimming in Kingdom Hearts 2, so if you fall into the water, you'll just magically spawn back at the door. The game's like, no, what is a no-no here? There are even chests that have been placed around containing useful items, mainly elixirs, and uh, a cool little thing about the chest is it's literally the chest model from Kingdom Hearts 1. And what's even cooler is there's some examinable stuff here that directly references Sora's time spent in Travis Town from Kingdom Hearts 1. You can go into the item shop, and yes, there is Huey, Dewey, and Louie. You can literally use their vendor. You can go into the accessory shop and talk to good old Jesse and buy some, well, an ability ring, but, but still, hey, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, even the second floor of the accessory shop containing the synthesis area is there with the Moog. Wait, hold on a minute. Wait a minute? Wait a minute? Is that him? Has he finally come back? That's right, all the Moogles in this game are organization Moogles. And, and just keep in mind, this is like the first HD-ish 4K kind of model that we've seen of the organization Moogle. So please do bask in his glory. You'll find all of the Final Fantasy characters wandering around town and they've all got their own pieces of dialogue. You can engage with them. They'll give you a little bit of backstory on like how Travis Town used to be their home. The Final Fantasy character that you find at the entrance into the second district in the first district will actually give you a mission. Now, this is the story aspect of this world. It's pretty simple and bare bones, but it, it's cool nonetheless just to see this because I've never seen this before. Uh, so basically, as you progress through the game, more missions will become unlocked for Travis Town. These missions are just simple waves of Heartless fought in the third district. But this is just such a cool touch. Like, they even went to the degree of putting in a completely custom command menu themed around Travis Town, which is just insane. And yes, once you complete the world, there are two rewards. You get the Oracle Com Plus you'd normally get from completing Atlantica, and on top of that, a brand new weapon, the Dream Sword. Very, very cool. And when you've finished up Travis Town, uh, you'll come across this mini scenario. Uh, anytime you go into the third district, one of the Final Fantasy allies will be fighting a group of Heartless, and you can help them out. The other one here is the world that never was. So now, when you're in the sort of first area of the world that never was, just after the alleyway, uh, there are like full-on scripted encounters with waves and waves and waves of Neo Shadows. You might also notice during this gameplay that there is an additional new Neo Shadow, a slightly bigger one with red eyes. They are stronger and they also have more HP and do different attacks. There's four different encounters that you have to go through uh, up until you reach the Memory Skyscraper. Now, traditionally in the Memory Skyscraper area, this is where you would fight 
Roxas. But because we didn't get the 1000 Heartless fight throughout the mid portion of the game, that now takes place here outside of the memory skyscraper. Now it's not quite 1000, but you do have to defeat 400 Neo Shadows. This is that moment that we see at the end of the Kingdom Hearts 1 secret movie, as well as the moment from Days. It absolutely boggles my mind that this is even possible, but here we are. All of the save points have been changed to that of Portals of Darkness, and it most certainly wouldn't be an overhaul mod if we didn't have custom Keyblades. So a whole new arsenal of Keyblades have been added, replacing a lot of the old ones, these are all Keyblades from Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, and it's it's great to see these now in HD. And I'll be real with you, like the Days Keyblades are some of the best and coolest looking in the entire franchise. They are massively underrated, and I just feel like not enough people actually know about them. So to see them finally here in Kingdom Hearts 2 is pretty incredible. This obviously means that someone actually spent the time to uh, re-3D model all of these due to just obviously how bad it would look if you just straight up imported a DS Keyblade um, into KH2, so kudos to that person. So that right there is Project Nobody May Cry. So much to unpack, there is just so much that this mod offers, and it's only in an alpha state, though I think that for the most part, most of this mod is complete, there is still some additional content uh, to come through. I believe that like the Cabin of Remembrance, all that kind of thing, the additional secret stuff has been a little bit untouched as of right now, and I would only assume that all of those additional extra post-game things, there'll be some new stuff revolving around those, maybe some new forms, but I have to say that just as of right now, from at least all of the mods that I've experienced, this is just hands down the absolute best one. If you are looking for a brand new, fresh Kingdom Hearts 2 experience, then this, my dear friend, is exactly what you're looking for. Roxas is just so fun to play as, with all of the new mechanics and extra additions into that of the combat system. It gives such a new, fresh take on the Kingdom Hearts combat system, uh, to a point where Honestly speaking, like it's it's almost more enjoyable to play as nobody may cry Roxas here than just base vanilla Sora. Um, I might get crucified for saying that, but like, oh my god, it's so fun! I want to say a massive kudos to the Project Nobody May Cry team. Uh, there is just too many people to actually individually read out loud, so all of their names are on screen as of right now. If this is something that interests you guys, please be sure to go check out the official YouTube channel for the mod. Uh, obviously, there'll be more updates coming out. As well as that, I'll put an installation guide to tell you exactly how you can get your little gremlin fingers on this for yourselves in the description down below too. However, guys, uh, that is all for today. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic one, and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.